Hi, I'm Tan Mei, class of 2020 graduate and full IB diploma candidate. Today, I'll be giving you some tips and tricks on surviving the IB. Let's get started. Make sure you have a creative or active outlet. It's something that's a great stress buster. It gets you away from the monotony of school and all the studies you have to do. And choose something you got to prioritize. I, for example, wanted to do everything. And I'm sure it feels like there's so many things you want to do, but you just don't have the time. Find something that you really enjoy that you couldn't do without and prioritize it and cut the other things. I know it hurts, but you really have to. Prioritize things and that way you'll be able to do all you want while also getting all the great work you need to do get done. And that way you can make sure you have all the time you need, enjoy your life, do some extracurriculars, have fun with your friends, and get the work done. <sighs> you will get overwhelmed. It's gonna happen. No matter how hard you try, the IB will eventually probably catch up to you. And you have to accept that. It's okay. It happens to everyone. I guarantee you it will happen to all of us. It's happened to me. It's happened to everyone in my grade as well. And when that happens, take a break. Have a Kit Kat. No, but seriously, your environment, your friends, your family, your hobbies, the people you're around, the, your room, take a break realize that it's okay. I know sometimes you feel guilty. Why am I taking this time off when I have math, chem, English, and university stuff to do? But you have to realize that it's important for you to step back, realize that the IB is not the end of everything. Though they're important, take a step back, recenter yourself, and then go back in. Take a break, prioritize things, use your friends friendly and your environment to help you out. And in doing so, you'll be able to take the IB and break it down. Trips are always great fun. Make sure you get ahead of them if you can. Let your teachers know ASAP when you find out you're going on a trip, whether it's a school trip or a personal trip. And if you can, try and get the work done before you go. That way you don't have it hanging over your head and you can have fun with your friends and family. And you'll be tired when you get back, so nobody wants to deal with work then. And I know we always tell ourselves, oh, I'll do my work on the flight, not an issue. Nine times out of 10, I end up watching a movie, and I'm sure you do too. So compromise, say, okay, I'll watch a movie, do some work, and then watch another movie. That way, you'll have great fun on the trips and you won't have to worry about work at all. Have fun. For cast, you should definitely choose experiences you'll enjoy. If you don't enjoy them, your heart won't be in them and your reflections won't turn out, turn out really good. And so if you join a cast activity in your junior year and you decide you don't like it, drop it, find another one. And once you find one, stick with it, stay committed. And for reflections, I know they're tedious to write, they take forever and you really don't want to do them because you have so many better things to do. But if you pick a day once a month and decide on that day, every month you'll write your reflections, that's all you'll need to do and cast from your breeds. EE week is definitely a blessing. Use it well, especially that's one week where you can just spend your whole time thinking about your EE. You have no other classes to worry about and I know it's summer just started, you don't want to do your EE. But if you use your summer well, get the EE out of the way, it'll be so much better when you start your senior year. You really don't want to be rushing your EE the day before it's due on your first day of school. Your supervisor, your examiner, both will be able to tell if you rush your EE and left it to the last day. Choose a topic you'll enjoy. A topic you'll enjoy so that it comes through in your reflections and it's something you genuinely want to learn about. The EE is a great experience for university because when there you'll be writing 4,000 word essays, etc. In that case, definitely choose an EE topic you'll enjoy and talk to your supervisor because they're your best resources. They've graded plenty of those subjects EEs before. Best of luck. TOK is a very different kind of subject. It's not your typical, you learn a concept and then you apply it. In TOK, the best way to really understand it is to engage, ask questions in class, throw your ideas out there even if you know they're wrong, start discussions. You have to be comfortable with the idea that there is no right answer and there perhaps are no wrong answers. So make sure you throw your ideas out there, engage, talk to your teacher, talk with the rest of your classmates and understand that it's not something you learn once and then you apply it in the test and forget it. But it's the way you think that really affects how you can excel at TOK. So be comfortable with the idea that there is no right answer, engage, ask questions, and you'll do well. You know yourself best. Some things may be easy while other things may be hard. Some things are a breeze, so you can just go over your revision notes once, check out class resources, just to make sure you didn't forget anything. Other subjects will probably be harder. This is where you really want to get ahead of it. If you know you have a test coming in two weeks, please don't start studying the day before. Go talk to your teacher in the week before. Attend extra help after school. Find other explanations that maybe make more sense to you on the same concept. Doing this makes sure that you aren't crammed for time and then you aren't stressing in the morning. 
that's not only better for your health, but also make sure that you probably do better in school that way. Prioritize where you need to study and don't study too much in other places. You know yourself best, trust yourself. If I could do it again, I'd probably get more sleep. Sleep really helps you with your memory, which is great for classes, especially when you need to remember a ton of things like you do in the IB. And the IB can be stressful at times or just life in general. So sleep helps you relax, take a break from it all and get ready for the next day again. So try and get more sleep. Taking a sip of water is always a good way to get a quick mini break from your test, especially when you can't get up. And please use the bathroom before. It's a huge hassle to have to get out, especially during IB exams, getting escorted. That's not the kind of secret service you want. And when you get a test, take a couple of minutes, look through it, attack the easy questions first. I know you want to think, okay, let me attack the hard ones. I have the most time for that. But you want to get as many points as you can as quickly as you can. So attack the quick ones first, easy ones first. And finally, in multiple choice tests, a good strategy I found is that if you write down your answers, let's say A, B, B, C, on your paper and then transfer them over in groups, you'll save time. Otherwise, every time you'll be searching for the right bubble. So make sure you do them before time, of course, or group and then bubble. Attack the easy ones first, then the hard ones, and it should all be fine. Thanks. Do yourself a favor and start your IAs early. Even if you get an idea way before it's IA season, talk to your teacher, write it down. They'll be able to guide you. That way, when IA season comes around and it's hectic, you're ready to go. And do a topic you enjoy, because when you do that, it'll be less like a chore and something that you actually want to learn about, which makes it a lot better. And don't overcomplicate it, please. Especially if you're doing a science IA. Make sure you allocate extra time for your experiment to go wrong, because science experiments are always unpredictable. Give yourself some time to do extra trials or change variables if things don't work out, and you'll be just fine. University is the next big step in your life. I know what the IB seems like it's going to go on forever, a long two years, but you will be preparing for university application amidst all the madness of IAs, extra work, etc. And your best resources for uni apps are honestly your counselors. They know everything. They have put all of us through university so far, including me. So go talk to them, communicate with them, let them know where you're planning to apply. Even if you're unsure, just talk to them, throw your ideas out there. And set deadlines for yourself. Let's say you have 10 universities you want to apply to. Decide what day you're going to submit each application by and stick to it. And if you run over time, talk to your counselor to make sure they don't pile up, especially with the rest of your work. Finally, be creative. Reuse your college essays for one and another if you can. In other words, be creative, make sure you go out there and get all your work done. Stay, stay organized, use a planner if it helps. For example, I need to finish writing my essay. That was my placement test for university. So boom, done that, that last weekend. Stay organized, talk to your counselor, and you'll be fine. The IB may feel like the longest two years of your life. Remember, these two years are yours to take. They can be the best two years of high school and your whole education you've had. You're at the top of high school as upperclassmen. Make the most of it. Go out to events, hang out with your friends, go make new friends, try everything you wanted to try. So later on, you can say, yeah, I did that in high school. Yeah, I did that too. I made the most of it. Have no regrets. Because even though the IB may want to grind you to a halt, you can go back and say, no, I'll do my work, but I'm also going to make the best of it. That is the one tip I have for you about the IB. The IB is important, but don't forget the rest of your life. Have fun, make the most of these two years because they won't come again. You got this. Best of luck. The IB is definitely the longest two years. Use it well. Especially Remember, these two years you are yours to take. They can be the best two years of high school and your whole education you have. You're at the top of high school.